My, my aim is that we make that as attractive a route. Now we've got to work out the details of exactly what, how it's going to be framed and what it's going to add up to. But the principle is certainly uh, to make it as an attractive a route. So you when, you say, when you say compete, it will be at the same level. Uh, and uh, we'll, we want as many people to be drawn to that route as possible. So, so if someone who has first class honours in a shortage subject in one of the Westbrook, because at the moment going into schools could attract up to 20,000 yeah. students, do you want the same Well, yeah, to because I'm very conscious of the fact that you've talked about competition, that, that if we don't do that, uh, FE will be at a disadvantage, a uh, disadvantage that wouldn't be compatible with the priority and status we're affording it. It's absolutely right that if we're going to give further education the status which it now enjoys at the heart of, of the government's plans, that we get the best people into FE. I, I think to be, to, 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 sorry, I don't want to be too verbose, but to add to that, I do think, and I'd be interested in Martin's views on it actually, as we free FE up, as we invest more authority in colleges, that actually it will both encourage people who already work there and attract good new people into the sector. You know, I do, I do think that the previous government, I don't want to be terribly partisan, uh, infantilised FE for a long time. When you infantilise a sector, you risk infantilising the professionals, and I'm not prepared to, to that to be uh, the, the, the characterisation of what we do. You know I want FE professionals to stand tall as the sector stands tall. When do you make the announcement on our first? On the detail. We will make the announcement on detail uh, on the back of the New Challenges New Chances announcement. I mean, I would add, I think, Ian, that I really welcome and grateful for the Minister's acknowledgement of the representations we make on the importance of initial teacher training in our sector. And I think he's right to say, over time, the freedoms that come into colleges will actually promote the sector and also its impression of itself and actually become very attractive. And that's an over time issue though. Here we have a here and now issue to deal with. And that's an issue actually around many of the best teachers in colleges are actually part-time teachers because they are practicing their craft, their trade, whilst they're actually teaching as well. And that in a very kind of organic way or a very effective way means to say they are teaching at the cutting edge of what vocational provision is because they have the music producer working at the Roland Music Centre in Walsall College is working as a working technologist in music technology or music production. But those people are giving up, in terms of accessing teacher training, it's a challenge to them because they're already earning at £21,000 and or above. So actually understanding how they're going to fund their teaching journey to actually get to the level of being a dual professional, both a professional in the field of teaching and a professional teacher, is something I think we need to think through and it's an exceptionally important area. Thank you.